You might be saying to yourself, self, how the hell did I click on this old man's video? Probably a few things. Number one, you're wondering, has my life come to this? Uh, yes, yes it has. Number two, it's because you know if you haven't already done so, you want to smash that subscribe button. Number three, it's because you know you want to follow the show on Twitter, so that way you can interact with me on all things relating to professional wrestling. And number four, you saw the title of the video. It's interesting, it's a relevant topic. Uh, so you wanted to hear my thoughts for some reason, and I thank you for that. And we're here to talk about this big news involving the WWE Network. Yes, that WWE Network that was big news itself back in February of 2014, I believe it was. It was almost seven years ago now. That's crazy to think about. Seven years ago that the WWE Network streaming platform was launched, which was a big, big seismic shift for the WWE in the way it did its pay-per-view business and in a lot of ways its business in general. And, you know, lots of people were happy about the fact I could watch all the old shows and all the old pay-per-views and only pay $9.99 a month. I think it was a huge deal. Some people looked at it and said, man, that's all you're going to charge for that? Are you undercutting yourself? Are you getting out of the pay-per-view business a little early? Are you ever going to reach the number of subscribers necessary to actually at least tread water and break even from what you lose from not being immersed in the pay-per-view business anymore? Like, it's a combination of all of those things. But here we sit. January of 2020, 2021, excuse me, in the midst still of an ongoing global pandemic and the WWE has entered into a deal with NBC Universal to take the WWE network for US customers and transition that platform into, and merge it into the Peacock network. And not only that, they're going to get a five-year deal worth a reported around or maybe a little bit more than one billion dollars. So, whoa, 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 hold on. Time out. You're telling me the WWE, for something they already do, is going to get $200 million plus a year for that same thing from somebody else for the next half decade. And it doesn't even impact the international customers because you'll still have the WWE network for them. And you're still going to be able to generate revenue for them. Like, look. Vince McMahon's product is really, really bad. And they deserve, as a company, criticism for the loss in viewership and everything else. Because that's not good. And it shouldn't be excused. It's also very interesting how it seems to not matter with all these billion dollar deals they seem to keep entering into. Right? It's just crazy. Interested viewership in their product is at an all time low, yet they continue to come up with these deals that generate significantly more revenue than they ever have before. That's insane to me. And it's insane to me that Vince and the WWE powers that be were able to pull this deal off. And look, there are things you can question about this deal and you can wonder about and ask questions about. That's fair. That's valid. That's how the business world works. It's good to do those things. But if you're sitting there saying this is a really dumb idea or a really bad idea or this is really stupid, then you're either A, just choosing to hate on them because you want to hate on them or B, you may yourself be really stupid. Because from a pure business sense, especially in the next five years, what actual downfalls are there? What actual downside is there to this? This is all an upside play. Like, let me spell this out for you. When the WWE released their Q3 financials, this was what, back in October or so. So for Q3, it had about 1.5 million paid subscribers for the WWE Network which is around their kind of like average uh, trend line of where they've been doing in terms of subscribers. A little over a million, about 1.1 million are domestic, meaning United States. And then another 400 plus thousand, 0.4 million-ish are international, everybody else. So this deal that they just cut is for five years and a billion dollars, so do the math, at least $200 million per year and only for U.S. customers. 
So taking a business model that right now, if you take that 1.1 million paid subscribers by the $10 a month, again, we're just kind of rounding up here, like I rounded down some of the subscriber numbers just to make the math simpler. 1.1 million subscribers, $10 a month. That's $11 million a month. $132 million in revenue a year for the domestic WWE network um, revenue. $132 million. Not exactly chicken feed, but not nearly what they used to make in pay-per-view business. So again, it's a little bit of, they pulled out of the pay-per-view business and maybe were a little bit ambitious to do it, but maybe for their perspective, it is better to do that as opposed to going down what they felt was a sinking business model. It wasn't entirely, but you know how Vince and the WWE tend to be over the years. They can't balance. They've either got to go to one extreme or the other, and they chose to go in one extreme. And sometimes it is, it is better to go big, go bold, or go the fuck home. And that's what they did. So now, you'll note the number here. 1.1 times 10 is 11. Can everybody agree with that? All right. You add a bunch of zeros because of the million. $11 million a month. There's 12 months in a year. 11 times 10 is 110, right? All right, add another 22, bam. $132 million a year. So from this NBC Universal deal for the WWE Network for US customers going into the Peacock Network, they're gonna get close to $70 million a year in additional revenue. Over $350 million in additional revenue over the length of this five year contract. If they never pick up another subscriber, if they only continue to tread water at the numbers they consistently keep, they're going to generate significantly more revenue than current state. They basically picked up an extra 55 to 60% of revenue just out of thin air. How in the hell is that a bad business deal? How in the hell is that a bad thing to do or a dumb thing to do? Especially at a time where they're not doing live events. You don't have paid customers, paying fans. So you're losing out. Yes, you could say you cut a lot of costs by not traveling and doing shows. But Jesus Christ, the money that they lose for doing some of their big four shows, especially WrestleMania and WrestleMania weekend and all the money they can charge for tickets for the different events and access and the Hall of Fame and all of that. They don't have any of that. And yet, lo and behold, you sit here and in the middle of a global pandemic where you have all these other entities cutting costs and trying to increase revenue every way they possibly can and struggling to stay afloat, the WWE just pulled an extra 350 plus million dollars out of thin effing air, basically, for something they're already doing. And all the while, all the while, they're still able to continue to have the WWE network at this time for international subscribers. So you talk about another 400,000 plus folks add a maybe average eight to 10, let's say $10 a month. That's 4 million a month, another 48 to $50 million a year approximately. So you're able to still keep that separate international stream of revenue. You've now had a 55, 60% increase in your domestic revenue. You're pretty much back close to where you were a decade ago in terms of in terms of what used to be your revenue under the old pay-per-view business model. How is this a bad deal? Like, how could anybody say this is dumb? How could anybody say this is stupid? How could anybody look at this and really have significant criticisms about it? And when you look at it, the WWE Network, the problem with that was it was isolated in its own little bubble. So those 1.5 million subscribers and the 1.1 million domestic subscribers on average each quarter were there and they were just there. But you had to entice new people to come to you and how are you going to do that if you have fewer people watching your products as they are? Now you go to the Peacock Network, which I believe at this time boasts over 22 million subscribers on that platform. It doesn't matter if it's including your Comcast deal or anything like that. It's 22 plus million users. WWE doesn't care about that number in terms of how many are sub paid subscribers versus not. They care about the fact that they've got a 20 plus times increase in the number of potential eyeballs that could view their product on the platform that they're going to be on compared to current state BAU. So 
instead of having to pay in or take a loss to get access to those additional mainstream eyeballs, I'm going to get more money and increase the size of my distribution platform by over 20 times. Like this is a win. This is a sizable, significant win from, for WWE and Vince McMahon. You don't have to be a sheep to admit that. You don't have to be an AEW hater to hate that, say that. It doesn't have to be anything. Like judge it off of the merits of its own deal. This to me in some ways is the WWE network was a, was a method of a way to them getting back to the revenue they used to generate. Like there's a criticism to be had there. In terms of it took you this long to get back to the previous pay-per-view business model revenue numbers. Very, very valid, fair criticism. But you've gotten back there now. And the timing with which you've been able to do that would seem like it would have been very, very hard to do, but you managed to get it done. So whatever leverage Vince McMahon and the WWE had, like this is a power play of leverage at the highest order, and I respect that. I absolutely do. And for those fans that are wondering what this is going to look like, I'm sure there will be details to come. I think it's March 18th is the date of official transition. You know, but basically think about it like this. Some of you, I think, already get the Peacock uh, network included in what you get with your uh, Comcast service. So you're not really paying anything extra, if I understand correctly. But there's like a premium option that's $4.99 a month and an ad-free option that's $9.99 a month. So we'll use me as an example. I've had the WWE Network since day one. It makes sense since I come on here and do wrestling videos on YouTube. I watch their pay-per-views. Well, boy, the $9.99 a month makes sense. It's a business expense. So now you're telling me for that same $9.99 a month, I could take that, plunk it on over into the Peacock Network and get access to a whole bunch of other different shows and different events that I don't have access to now and still maintain a good portion of not all of the access that I have to existing WWE Network content. Sign me the fuck up. Like, what is there to complain about? Oh, because I gotta sit there and change. Ah, shut up. It ain't that big of a deal. Like, who cares? That's a nothing. It's not a nothing from the standpoint of the WWE and Peacock because you gotta figure out how you're gonna make that transition and there are certainly always gonna be bumps in the road and people that are going to have problems and challenges, but long term, like, give me a break. You can pay half as much and still get that access to that stuff. Or you can pay the same amount you're paying now and get access to everything WWE Network related and a whole bunch more. So the company's getting a whole bunch more money for something they already do just to be part of somebody else's distribution platform, basically. And fans that have subscribed to WWE Network are going to basically get a lot more bang for their buck. Like from both of their aspects, how is this a bad deal? I mean, this is incredible. I don't mean incredible like to ball wash WWE here, but it's incredible feat that they were able to pull this off. You have gotten more money to expand your platform's reach and access by 20 plus times. That's phenomenal work. I mean, thank God they took over all the talents, Twitch, and Cameo accounts, right? Right? Woo! If I was one of the people in WWE, one of those talents, I'd be pissed right now. Because they made such a big deal about Twitch and Cameo, and they had some legitimate gripes, and some of it was just petty Vince power play. But you had to take control of their fucking accounts. All the while, all the while... This is true grimy gangster Wall Street bullshit, all the while knowing he's negotiating a significantly sizable deal with NBC Universal to get the WWE Network to go on the Peacock Network. Really? You were so concerned about the Twitch and Cameo crap? All the while you're doing this? Like, that's grimy. This is the type of stuff that Wall Street absolutely loves and Main Street absolutely hates. You continue to plow over the little guy, so to speak. In this case, the little guy is represented by the talents, the wrestlers, the refs, the commentators, all those people. <laughs> all the while, the shareholders profit nicely, and the people at the top of the company certainly profit nicely. Um, yeah, that's grimy. <laughs> and all that additional revenue, they're still not going to provide health insurance to the wrestlers and their families, or excuse me, their independent contractors. 
They're not going to pay the additional taxes that would be required if you treated them as employees instead of forcing them to be independent contractors. Although there is nothing to me that seems legal about the definition of independent contractor based off of the way the WWE treats these wrestlers. Like even when they announced WWE has released, you can't release somebody that technically is not your employee. You could terminate the contract as an independent contractor, but really? And that's what's amazing to me is that Vince is able to pull this off and still able to get away with murder when it comes to some of his labor practices. And he does. He absolutely does. And it's also fascinating to me how some people are going to sit there and criticize this from a business standpoint. At this particular moment in time, you really don't have much of a leg to stand on in the short or even near term. Yes, ratings are still important for Raw and SmackDown, and especially you look at Raw and you say, this is not good. You say NXT, this is not good. Are they going to just put NXT entirely on the Peacock Network? Why the hell would they? They got a separate contract with NBC Universal for having that show two hours on Wednesday night on USA Network. Unless they're going to sit there and throw them extra money to put it on the freaking network, like why would they take it off of USA? I'm sure they'll keep it there. And they'll run it on loop on the network like they have. Like It's almost like the WWE generated passive income here. You'll hear some of these people, these self-help people and these gurus online, some of them legit and some of them total bullshit artists talking about Oh, you got to have passive income. Well, it's a lot easier when you get gifted money. And it feels like the WWE got gifted money and a whole hell of a lot of money. They don't really have to do anything extra. And they just made a shit ton more. Like, that's a nice hustle when you can get it. And that's exactly what it was. It was a hustle. And they hustled NBC out of a billion dollars. LOL, Vince wins, I guess. Like, if you want to question things about... Hey, what happens long term if that Peacock network is a failure? What the hell do you do then? Great question. What the hell do you do if your overall viewership and interest continues to decline and Peacock network looks and sees how much traffic you're generating to the WWE network and they say, we're right now on the network, the average user's watch time is maybe five and a half hours now, it's down to three, two and a half hours. And they look at it and they say, we're paying for this and you're not giving us this. Like, there could be some serious problems down the road. I would agree. Four or five years down the road, but they could still be there. And I'm also fascinated that Vince gave up some control here because we know how this son of a bitch doesn't like to give up control over anything. He's a dude that gets mad if you sneeze around him. He hates sneezing. But yet he's going to let Peacock Network and NBC Universal have ownership or stewardship over his WWE Network? He put a price on that and he got his price. And he's still going to be able to generate international revenue from international WWE Network subscribers. Like, to me, this is insane. So you guys can feel free to let me know in the comments what you think about this deal. If you want to criticize this from a business standpoint, boy, would I love to hear it. If you want to criticize Vince McMahon from a moral standpoint and saying, here's all this revenue and yet they'll probably do some roster cuts soon or other cost-cutting measures or they'll continue to treat their wrestlers as independent contractors and not give them some of the shit they should absolutely be entitled to get since they're realistically employees, feel free to blast away at Vince McMahon and the company for that because they deserve every bit of effing criticism they can get for those practices. And the fact that they've been allowed to continue for so many decades is gross and sickening. And they're not the only ones in wrestling, mind you, that do that. Everybody just follows their model. But from a pure business standpoint, at a time where businesses are closing and all of that, like revenues are tight, this company just basically got more money, like a passive income, for doing the same shit they're already doing. Like, how in the hell can you possibly criticize that? <laughs>